that holy ground, there's a medley that goes with it. So you could get the same title and it's a different song. Yeah. So you Oh, okay. It is a gorgeous Sunday morning because we are here uh, worshiping in God's house in spirit and in truth. We are glad you're here worshiping with us, especially those who are visiting. Please uh, let us know who you are. Uh, sign the registration pad that we may greet you by name after worship. There's an awful lot going on in the life of our church uh, coming up, especially beginning next Sunday uh, when uh, a lot of new things are happening. And Joe Carney, are you here? I guess not. And so I want to tell you, next week is Rally Sunday, and a couple of things are going to happen. Number one, this service is going to start at 11 o'clock instead of 1045, and so we'll be having an 11 o'clock worship here, and Sunday school will be starting. Rally Sunday is going to be an exciting time. Um, kids are going to get all involved. There's going to be uh, a lot of fun. Also, there's going to be a mission uh, uh, opportunities. You can see what's going on in the life of the church. Some of the folks that have been doing mission in the church will have posters and banners and so forth. But most importantly, the, the kids will be uh, actively involved in worship and uh, actively involved in beginning this, uh, this new season. Of, uh, of church here coming up. And so uh, we look forward to next Sunday. And the other thing is, uh, come between services especially, come at 10 o'clock, because that's when a lot of stuff's going to start happening. We are going to have ice cream too. For those of you who like ice cream at 10 o'clock in the morning, um, and, and it's, it's good any time, I know. We try to provide as healthy a, a food as we possibly can here at Fields United Methodist Church. So. Uh, <laughs> glad, uh, glad you're all here. Uh, let us begin this time of worship. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. This is a holiday weekend, Labor Day weekend. Hallelujah. Anytime, I don't know about for you guys, but anytime you know a holiday comes up, whether it be great or small, whether it be great such as Thanksgiving or Christmas, it's always a time for reflection for me. It's a time to to think about the day and its significance. And, and Labor Day should be no exception. It goes out to those that have put their hard work in and those that are just starting the workforce, whatever the case may be, or those are struggling, we just don't know. Um, Pastor Tom's devotional this week was powerful. It spoke about pretty much saying, you know, don't consider yourself all that, Pastor, if I could <laughs> paraphrase. It's basically saying, humble yourself, in the sight of God and man, and in your due time, in his due time for you, you will be exalted. And we have a lot to look forward to. 
in our heavenly home, and it's truly magnificent. And when it's in comparison to everything that's going on, struggles, joys, concerns, it's really so small compared to what we, we have awaiting us. And God is that good. And we also need to keep proper perspective of who we are and whose we are. And first and foremost, the Lord must come, and he is holy. So we ask that you join us in our first song today. Stand, if you will. It's called Holy is the Lord. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for these men and women that come faithfully, Lord, to seek your counsel, to bow at your feet, to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for the message that is going to be delivered today from Pastor Tom. We thank you for all of us collectively coming together as a body of believers to give you glory and to give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
Father God, we thank you for being holy. You are worthy of all praise. Let us all give a round of praise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah, Lord. Holy is the King of kings and the Lamb of God. Greet somebody in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Please join me for the reading of the word. You'll find that on page 1194 in your pew Bibles. Hebrews chapter 13. Keep on loving each other as brothers. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those in prison as if you were their fellow prisoners and those who are mistreated as if yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexual immor sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Praise God. How many people find it hard to, whatever it takes, do what is good to your neighbor? I know I do. I find it hard sometimes. And, um, and that's just because we're human. It's just because we, we live in the here and now. we got things going on in our minds and... We can easily get distracted, but in all that we do or say, we should do it as if we're doing it unto the Lord and not unto men. And I've had several instances where that scripture of entertaining angels without even realizing it has come to light. And you might not realize it right away. You might realize it a week later. Somebody else who was with you might have recognized it and told you. But one thing that's just beautiful about that is that God is all-encompassing and more importantly he's the same yesterday today and forever and he is awesome Stand. when he rose up his sleeves the angels put him on the ribs our god is an awesome god there is thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his fist our god is an awesome god the Lord wasn't joking when he kicked him out of Eden. It wasn't for no reason that he shed his blood. His return is very soon, so you better be believing that our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. When the sky was starless in the void of the night, our God is an awesome God. 
He spoke into the darkness and created the light. Our God is an awesome God. Judgment and wrath He poured on Sodom. Mercy and grace He gave us at the cross. I hope that we have not too quickly forgotten that our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. You may be seated. This morning there is much to celebrate in our nation. We celebrate Labor Day. Uh, Labor Day is an opportunity for us to thank those who labor. Thank those who, who do work. Thank those uh, whose um, industry uh, created jobs, created employment, created all the, that, that we uh, cherish here. Uh, we, we thank those who are even working today in our hospitals and, and making sure the lights are on. We just thank those who work to put food on their table. And so this is a time to celebrate for sure uh, all the all the uh, the blessings that we have as a nation and, and all those whose wisdom and, and uh, really enthusiasm uh, have made this nation uh, great. Uh, so we, we thank all those who labor. Uh, and that is a joy. It's a joy to be in God's house today. It's a joy to do God's work. It's a joy to be in mission uh, in the world. It's, I'm really excited about next week because, boy, you're going to see some stuff that's going on in our church. And, when our kids are going to be excited and all apart, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a holy time to be sure. And again, another reminder, this worship starts at 11 o'clock, uh, beginning next Sunday through the end of May. And But 10 o'clock is the time when, when the kids are coming, and, and uh, you celebrate that and celebrate the other ministries. And again, ice cream is always good at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I guess I can ask for an amen. I'm not sure. Amen. amen. I guess that is appropriate. Uh, hallelujah, too. Yeah. Uh, uh, one thing I forgot at the beginning, uh, on, on September 14th, there is a fundraiser that's, that's for community care. Uh, community care provides uh, uh, much-needed resources for folks in our community who, who are hungry and, and just struggling. Uh, that would be from 6 to 9 at the American Legion Hall. Uh, I have tickets. They're $25 each or two for $40. So uh, put, that, um, put that on your calendar. Let me know if you need tickets, too. Uh, most importantly, though, there are many people that need our prayers this day, so we need to lift those up, certainly. We, we pray for our nation. We pray for those in Syria and Egypt and in our world right now that seems to be just a little bit unsettled. Uh, we, we also pray for, uh, um, again, for our nation. Uh, note those on the prayer list. I have a couple I'd like to lift up to you. In addition, Jeanette McKenzie and also Kirk McGeehan, who needs a uh, uh, healing uh, right now. Are there other joys or concerns of the church here today? Um, I have a joy to lift up next week, as Tom has been saying, is Rally Sunday. And the leadership team of the MYF is extremely excited um, because we'll be kicking off next Sunday evening as well from 5.30 to 8 o'clock in the pavilion. We're going to be doing a minute to win it to start things off. Um, this is going to be a year of, of growth um, for the group and loss of control for the leaders as we turn it over to the kids more. Um, so pray for us. We're, we're kind of control freaks. 
Um, but it's going to be a terrific year, and we're very, very excited about it. Um, anxious to get Kirk out of the hospital so he can be there with us next week. And Labor Day weekend is very special to me because 15 years ago, um, it took the whole weekend, but finally Lindsay made her appearance. So Thursday we celebrate her 15th birthday. All right. And that age group, sixth grade through 12th, right? Sixth through 12th. Uh, my neighbor, Pebble Camp, uh, you've prayed for her many times. Mm -hmm. She is at the Cleveland Clinic. She's having, uh, she had surgery and she's having it corrected. So keep her in your prayers. Prayers for Pebble. Aside, I have a joy um, to express. Uh, I want to thank God for bringing me through a very trying several months and for blessing me with great, a great church family, Pastor Tom, and I saw many angels in the form of hospital staff at Mercy Hospital. They, they do a great job there, and I'm very thankful for my family and all my friends. Um, it, it was, I'm, I just thank God for blessing me in so many ways. We are thankful you're here, Linda. God bless you. Um, we would like to ask for prayers for the Davis family. He's a fraternity brother of my husband, a father of four, and uh, he's a great, he was a great husband, but he died in Lake Erie last week saving his son. So if we can please pray for that family. Nicole, what was the family name? The Davis family. The Davis family. I have a close friend named Betsy Kaminsky, and about a week and a half ago, she suffered a stroke, and she has some paralysis on her left side, so I'd like prayers for Betsy. And we are celebrating a double birthday today. It's Zach's 22nd birthday, and it's our grandson Michael's ninth birthday. All right. Celebration. <laughs> Hi, um, I ask for prayers for my mother, Marta Rojas, and my brother, Candido Cruz. Um, my brother struggled with drug addiction, and he's actually incarcerated, and he's facing a long sentence, and my mother's devastated, so I ask that you keep our family in prayer. We will keep your family in prayer for certain. Thank you. Uh, I have two things. Uh, my neighbor, Henry Korber, passed night before. So uh, fam family uh, prayers for, for his, those left behind. And uh, my nephew, Matt, and his wife, Chrissy, uh, they're not here today because she looks like she should have delivered a week ago, but she's going to go Thursday, if not before, right. and uh, have a little girl. So let's prayers for that. Thank you. Okay. And that's Henry Corker? Okay. We're celebrating two birthdays today, my dad and my sister, and travel blessings Friday, six motorcycles. And uh, I'm gonna be on the back of one of them. We'll be leaving for a trip this weekend, so travel blessings. Travel blessings. For birthdays. It's for birthdays. <laughs> All right. Don't drive over the speed limit. And watch those turnpike toll gates. I'm sorry. This, this, Anyone else? This, <clears throat> this is the anniversary of my first date with my lovely bride next to me. And uh, it's a very important day in my life. All right. What a celebration. <laughs> Anyone else? Let us thank God to God in silent prayer. Gracious God, what a joy it is to be in your house this day. What a joy it is to lift up uh, our, our, our joys, our celebrations, and also our cares, Lord God. We know that we lay them at the foot of your throne, and uh, we know things will be okay. Lord God, on this 
uh, Labor Day weekend, we celebrate all of those who labor, all of those who uh, um, have the industry, the integrity, um, and have the wisdom to create jobs, who do the jobs, and we just thank you, Lord God, for offering so many people so many gifts uh, to, do, uh, to do work in your land. Lord God, thank you for them, and thank you for the privilege of being able to work. Lord God, we, we, come, we gather here this day with a whole lot of joy, Lord. We, we lift it up to you, birthdays and celebrations, anniversaries and, and, and new beginnings. And we give you thanks, Lord God, for uh, the privilege of being able to uh, look at those things with joy. And, and we, we do pray for Chrissy and Matt, uh, and we pray for all those others who are expecting uh, newborns, Lord God. We, we, we just pray uh, strength. <laughs> And we pray for wisdom, but most importantly, for joy and celebration. Uh, Lord God, we, we also uh, need to lift up to you your world, especially uh, in the region of Syria and Egypt and, the, and that region of the world, Lord God, where there's so much um, unsettling times, Lord. And we just pray for your peace and your wisdom to intercede in those places and, and the leaders of those places, Lord God. Lord, we pray for our great nation and our leaders. We pray for our community leaders. Lord God, we also pray for our schools, our support staff, our teachers, our, the children, their parents, and, and caregivers all over, Lord God. We just pray, uh, we pray that you give them the, the strength, the will, and the wisdom uh, to, to do your work. Lord God, we pray for those who uh, cannot be here this day. Uh, those who are struggling with, with many things in their lives. We pray for those who are traveling, um, uh, travel blessings upon them. Lord God, we pray for those who are, who are grieving the loss of loved ones, Lord. We pray for the, the family and friends of Clinton Langley, the family and friends of Julie Murawski, the family and friends of Jeannie Greenbank, the Davis family, the family and friends of Harry Corker. And Lord God, we just pray that their grief may turn to joy with a certain hope of everlasting life for the ones they have lost. And, and the other promise is that there will be a day that all shall be rejoined with them and all the other saints who have gone on before them in your house, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Lord God, we pray for all the caregivers who work tirelessly for their loved ones uh, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. We just pray for, um, for strength. We pray for wisdom. We pray for peace and comfort for them as well. But we also lift up those who require your healing presence. We, we pray for Pebble and Amy and Celia, for David and George and Carrie and Rich, for Mark and Jeanette, for Matt, for Mary Lou, for Marty, for Rachel, for Bridget and Amy and George and Kirk and Betsy, and all those other families that are struggling with addictions and, and uh, depression and all those things, Lord God, we just pray that, that your spirit will intercede in their lives and, and, and make them whole and, and, and uh, you know, set them forth to rejoice uh, in a newfound freedom in you. Uh, Lord God, we, we lift all those things up to you and we pray your Holy Spirit rest upon all of our prayers here this day that that those that we lift up to you will be healed in body and in soul. And now, Lord God, we pray for each other and for ourselves that we may be enlivened by your Holy Spirit to continue the good work that you have begun in each and every one of us. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who through his disciples taught us to pray boldly together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, Lord God, we pray your blessings upon the gifts that we will be offering to you this day. Bless them and multiply them uh, for your glory, in Jesus' name, amen.
to invite the children to come forward for a children's chat. Good morning, everybody. I have a question for you. Have you ever been number one? Hey. Do you win all the time? You win all the time? Was that the right word? Wow, that's really neat. How about right all of you out there? Do you win a lot? No, not always, no. huh? Sometimes we, there's always somebody a little bit faster who's going to run, isn't there? There's Always seem to be somebody days. smarter too, who Some knows more words and stuff. No. That's a good CV. Well, for it. most of us, there's always somebody smarter. Some but you know what? Really there might we might not win all the time. Yeah, it's good stuff. But you know, Maybe to God, we're always win. number one. You are the most important person to God. Oh, yeah. And and God says that you are honored. That means Hello, that everyone. you're at the head of the class. Good. You're uh, number Jim? one to God. Loved all the time. So if you run a race and you might not win, guess what? God still thinks that you're number one. And God will never think otherwise. God will love you all the time and think you are the greatest person in all the world. You know why? Just because you are you. And that's, that's really important. And that's what the, the scripture lesson this morning is all about, that that God, God wants you to feel loved. God wants you to feel uh, that, that, that no matter what, God's with you. And, and just remember that. If some days you might not do real well, or you know, there might be that, that time, which I'm sure doesn't happen at all, you might not listen to your mom and dad, and, and you might do something wrong, you might not feel like, gosh, I, I could have done better. Guess what, God? Uh, God says that's okay, because we all make mistakes, and you're, in my eyes, God says you are number one. And so always think of that. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for, for loving us all the time. Thank you for thinking that we are special and, and the best. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, thanks for coming up, guys. Yeah, Rob, just drive that last, the, that, this little light of mine. Just drive it through that funky beat you were doing. The, this little light of mine. That, or this is the day, sorry. We'll just, you drive it. We'll, I'm not even going to play, I don't think. Bye. Let us pray. Lord God, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, that as the scripture is read and your word is proclaimed, that we may be filled with joy, hope, and the salvation of our souls. Now, Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. Thank you, Lord God, for yet one more opportunity for us to get it right. In Jesus' name, amen. Gospel is according to St. Luke in the 14th chapter. On one occasion when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him intently. When he noticed how the guests chose places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He, he said also that the one, to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or, or your relatives or rich neighbors in, in case they might invite you in return, and you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. It is human nature, 
at one time or another in our lives to feel the desire to be special, to be set apart, to be honored for something, sometime, anything. At this banquet time, Jesus noted this human proclivity as he entered the hall. Everybody seemed to be scrambling for the best seat in the house, walking around with the best stories, making themselves just a little bit better than they are. I attended an awful lot of sales meetings in my career, and I heard that an awful lot. Seems like everybody was the number one salesperson in those type of meetings, but everybody wanted to be one ahead of the other. Everybody wanted to sit at the, at the, at the front of the table. So there was competition to see who in the crowd was the most influential. Who had the best doctors? Who had the best pastor? Who has the best mechanic? Who got the best deal at the local auto dealership? All these things were set out there. Everybody had to be one up on the other. Unfortunately, in the fight for the front row, we can end up far away. Because the reality is, saints, there is always someone better. There is always someone more deserving, more experienced, more educated, and more gifted. That's the way life goes. Jesus, however, would like to lead us off that roller coaster of life to settle our souls to what is made more real, important, Pride can be a dangerous thing. It can be a motivator. If you have pride in what you do, you can do excellent things. You can do wonderful things. You can do all the things you want to you excel. That is part of having pride in, your, in yourself and what you do. But on the other hand, pride can also be a barrier. As we begin to say, if only I could have the best of everything. If only I could have the best house, the best health care, the best investors, the best of the best, just one time, just so I can let somebody know that I have the best. Maybe because I really want to believe I deserve it. It does seem that everybody has the best doctor. I, I, I talk to a lot of people and everybody who's having surgery say their doctor's the best. There's a big crowd at number one, and that's okay. You have to have, you have, to have faith in the people who are cutting you open, I suppose. But, um, but honor, and this is the problem, honor cannot be self-bestowed. It has nothing to do with our worldly credentials, our talent, our material wealth, our rules, or anything alike. Honor is not where we sit in life, but rather who seats us. And so our faith offers a clearer perspective in what is right in the sight of God. Jesus said, those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Humility is probably one of the most misunderstood terms in Christendom. Humility is not about cowering away in the corner. Humility is not about being a doormat for everybody else. Humility is realizing that it has nothing to do with us, but everything to do with God. Humility is the honor of knowing that we are God's beloved, that we are honored and cherished by God, and that by God's grace, we become exalted. But saints, we try to fight that, don't we? We try to be better than, than, than we really are. We try to have this front. We try to put the mask on sometimes. We inwardly feel that maybe we deserve just a little bit more. Remember the story of the mother in, in, in the scripture? 
that had two sons, goes up to Jesus and said, Jesus, would you do me a favor? My two sons are obviously the best of your disciples, right? Could you put my eldest son at your right hand and the middle child at the left? Middle child never gets the right hand. Jesus looked at her and said, you know, you got great kids. But I want to tell you something. Only God bestows that honor. It's only God who will bestow that gift to your kids. And I think that offers us humility of knowing that, hey, we're not in charge. Choosing our own seat of honor comes with a price that Jesus would just as soon not have us pay. It always seems that we, when we exalt ourselves, when we feel that we are better than we are, and let people know that, that is when our world starts crashing down around us. We want to be recognized. We want that title. We want, we want, we want, just like Yertle the Turtle. Anybody know who Yertle the Turtle is? Yeah. Well, Yertle the Turtle so told Dr. Seuss was a turtle in the swamp. And, the, and Yertle decided that he wanted to see more. He wanted to be in charge of everything he surveyed, but right then and there what he saw was mud. So he asked the other turtles to come, why don't you just stack up on top of each other? So about three turtles came, and of course Yertle was on the top of the three, and he looked around and he said, that's all right, but there's some mountain peaks out there I like to see too, because everything I see I want to be in charge of. So he called some more turtles to come in, and he started stacking more and more turtles. And he looked around and said, okay, well I can see that mountain, but I see there's another peak on the other side. I need to be higher. And so he got more turtles, and he started stacking them up. You can just see how Dr. Seuss is animating this, right? The, 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 the tower starts swaying a little bit, but you know, Yertle is starting to see a lot. But guess what? The turtle on the bottom had a cold. <laughs> and he sneezed. And when that turtle sneezed, what happened was, everything fell down. Where did that leave Yertle? In the mud. Couldn't see a doggone thing after that. You see, he wanted to build him up so, himself up so much, he was duly humbled. You know, it never seems to work. It is by God's grace and God's grace alone that we are exalted. Because of our relationship with Christ. You see, God calls us to move beyond who we think we are or how we portray ourselves to be, to live a life fully by God's grace. That's kind of freeing. It's kind of comforting. To love one another not for personal gain, or even to be loved in return, but because we are called to love. And it gives glory to God. And giving glory to God is the right thing to do. We hold fast to the sanctity of our marriages. Not because we don't want them to fail. But because loving our spouse makes them feel incredibly special incredibly loved, incredibly honored. And that gives glory to God. And that is the right thing to do. We reach out to those who are struggling in their day-to-day -day lives, not to make a friend or to put another notch in, in our seat of honor, 
but because it exalts another. And that gives glory to God. And that is the right thing to do. Giving glory to God is not destroying or hating or anything else of the like. Giving glory to God means to take seriously loving God and loving neighbor in all that we do. Fulfilling the great commandment that God put before us. The quality of our lives is not based on where we are seated at the table or even by the recognition of those around us. Rather, we are exalted and honored by God who seats us at the head of the table because we are first and foremost a child of God. Beloved, precious, and honored. The quality of our life is not the place of honor that we seek, but it, it is the certainty that God has accepted us for who we are with all of our faults, with all of our pains, with all of our doubts, with all of our sorrows, with all of our joys, with all of our celebration. God accepts us for who we are. And guess what? We're all invited to the banquet. We the poor. We the lame, we the suffering, we the joyous, we the celebrating. We are all invited to the banquet. We who need to accept the hand of God's grace in our lives. Saint, you are honored. You are loved by the one who calls you by name. Not only now, but forevermore. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. This morning we are invited to God's table as we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. I'd like to invite those who will be helping serve come forward at this time and stand on either side of the table. God invites us to his table. This is not the table of Fields United Methodist Church nor the United Methodist Church. This is the table of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and invites all who seek a closer relationship with God and with each other. And so we come here humbly, acknowledging who we are and most important, whose we are. So let us come humbly to this table and sit at the seat of honor. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for this privilege of coming to your table. We give you thanks for all those prophets and all those who brought your word to us. But most importantly, Lord God, we give you thanks for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who healed the sick and ate with sinners and promise to be with us always, even to the end of the age. Lord, on the night in which you gave yourself up for us, you took a loaf of bread, you blessed it, broke it, and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat. When the supper had ended, he took the cup, again giving thanks to you, blessed it, and said, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin." Take and drink. Now, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by your blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for this mystery of faith. As we gather at your banquet table this morning and partaking of your body and your blood, that we become one with you and one with each other in ministry to all the world. Grant us your peace, your power, and your presence now and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Isn't Janet doing great? Look at this here. She's doing awesome. You know, Tom, your message spoke clear to me about so many different things, and we are to, to humble ourselves and remember whose seat we're going to have. And this message goes out for the young sister out there and, and for Dee as well. I, I want to... I want to build on what Pastor Tom was saying and just say that victory comes through surrender. And that's not, that's not easy to do, you know, when you look at the world of sports that we have and everything. I mean, imagine if you're a head coach and you say, I want you guys to surrender to your opponents. What do you think the team's going to say? They're going to look at you crazy. But in the context of all things in this life, comparing to that, to what Christ has for us, true victory comes in surrendering to his will. So praying for you and your brother. And Dee, you know, you know what I'm praying for for you, honey. So, hallelujah. Well, let's rise to our feet and sing a good oldie, but a goodie. Well, I guess they're all old. Oh, no. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord hath made, and what? I will rejoice and be glad in it. It's that simple. We're going to put a little beat to it, and we're going to sing it. So we're going to need your help whenever you're ready, Rob. Oh, 
switch it up a little bit. We're going to say, Jesus is the way. Ready? Let's go. Jesus is the way, Jesus is the way that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Jesus is the way that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Father God, we thank you for today. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory for everything that you do. Father, we ask that you go with us, surround us with your glory, surround us with your presence. It's all-encompassing and it's awesome until we see each other again in whatever, whatever circles. Father God, be with us as we travel, be with us as we remember those that make this country function as it does, the workforce. We just thank you, Lord Jesus. Be glorified today, and may everybody have a great week. In Jesus' name, amen.